The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the sneak peek of the Building Envelope campaign uh, before our formal launch here in a couple weeks in June. Uh, my name is Haley McLeod, and I'm the Building Envelope campaign lead from Oak Ridge National Lab. Um, and today you'll hear from myself and Dr. Simon Palin, who is our technical lead. Um, and we're just going to explain a little bit about the, the campaign and how it's structured, um, our new building envelope performance metric, and then walk you through our fantastic new website and online calculator. Um, so first, a little bit of housekeeping about Slido. Um, we are going to be using Slido today for just a couple of polls and then for our Q&A section at the end. Um, if you could please go to slido.com, this works on either your mobile device or just in a different window of your web browser and enter code uh, sneak peek. Um, we'll have a couple of polls there throughout that I'll tell you when to go looking for them. Um, and then the other functionality of Slido I wanted to point out is that if you have a question come up during the course of the webinar, feel free to go ahead and submit it. And then other participants can actually upvote your question. Um, so if we run out of time at the end and we can't answer everyone's questions, we can definitely make sure that we answer the most popular questions. Um, so with that, we're going to go ahead and start our first Slido poll. So again, that's slido.com and event code sneak peek. Um, and so our first poll is just so that we can get to know a little bit more about you. So we just want to know um, what type of organization you represent. Um, so if you've logged in through Slido, you should see it through, through that screen. Um, or you can log in, you can find it using the, the QR code on your screen. So, not seeing any answers come through yet. Oop, we got at least one engineer on the line. There we go. It's all, all loading up. And I'll give this, you know, another, another 10 seconds or 15 seconds. So. Okay. It was great watching these results come in. Looks like some people are still entering their, their responses and getting into Slido for the first time. Okay. We do have quite a bit of information to get through today, so I'll give you guys another few seconds to log on and answer that first poll. Um, and we'll close it down here in just a minute. Um, so lots of engineers and lots of others. I'm curious about what um, what category I left out. <laughs> Okay, looks like looks like everybody's answers are in, so we can go on. But thanks, thanks for being here. I think I think every category I had entered was represented, so that's great. Um, have a broad audience today. So, um, so most of you will know this already, but um, I'm still going to give a little bit of background on the Better Buildings Alliance. Um, the Alliance does include more than 230 organizations, which represent over 11 billion commercial square feet um, across those five key market sectors. Um, and the Building Envelope campaign is the latest technology campaign out of the Better Buildings Alliance. Um, there have been previous ones, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit here. Um, they've all been led by DOE's national labs. Um, and the aim of these campaigns is to accelerate the adoption of efficient building technologies by providing technical assistance, resources, and guidance on implementation of best practices. Next slide. Thank you. And then the there are seven tech teams that uh, work with the Better Buildings Alliance. And the Building Envelope tech team is housed at Oak Ridge National Lab, which is why we have been tasked with um, getting this campaign up and running. So next slide. So 
So this is not everyone who's on the Envelope Technology Research Team or ETRT at ORNL, um, but there are, are some of our smiling faces there. Um, the reason that this Envelope Tech Team is so important is that Envelope Technologies account for approximately 30%, so almost a third of the primary energy consumed in commercial buildings. Um, so that plays a key role in determining levels of comfort, natural lighting, ventilation, um, and ultimately just how much energy is required to heat and cool a building. Um, I'm sure we've all been in a drafty building in our lives and wondered what that was doing to their, um, to their energy bills. So that's me all the way on the left, um, Dr. Simon Palin, who you'll be hearing from here shortly. Um, and then we, our team would certainly not be complete without Drs. Bandari and DeGraw, who have been additional tech team support, or our fabulous full stack developer, Akita Cranville. Next slide. So these are those uh, previous Better Buildings Alliance campaigns that I mentioned. Um, we are following in their multi-million dollar footsteps. Um, and the main difference between these campaigns and our campaign is that these have all been focused on specific technologies, um, whereas the building envelope campaign just by its very nature is going to be broader. Um, the building envelope encompasses so much, there just isn't a single technology that we can focus on. Um, so instead we've broken it out into four primary sections. So we have, um, roof, walls, windows, and then just the overall air tightness of your building. Next slide. Um, we fortunately are already working with some great people to get the campaign up and running. Um, we'd like to go ahead and say thank you to our organizers, um, IVEC and IFMA. So if you aren't familiar, IVEC is the International Institute of Building Enclosure Consultants, and IFMA is the International Facility Management Association. And we are very lucky to include them both um, as, our, as our organizers for this campaign. Um, and then we wanted to say thank you to our early participants and supporters that have, have been on earlier webinars about the campaign and, and even without seeing it in its, in its final and full glory have said, yes, sign me up, uh, we wanna be involved. Um, I wanna take a second here to break down the difference between participants and supporters. Um, we knew early on that the online calculator that we've developed um, was going to be primarily useful to building owners and managers or to those directly contracted by them. So your engineers, architects, and consultants. Um, but we, we wanted to make sure that this campaign could really encompass the entire industry. And there are certainly groups that are invested in the campaign that don't um, own or operate buildings themselves. So participants are going to be the, like I said, the building owners and managers or those directly co contracted by them who are making design decisions about buildings using our, um, our tool and resources and then submitting those buildings for recognition by DOE. Um, supporters, on the other hand, may not actually be in charge of buildings, but want us to host webinars, um, are willing to share marketing materials for us on occasion, um, and you know, are still groups that are invested for one reason and another in improving the building stock of the US. Um, so this may be, you know, ESCOs who are interested in having lower demand on the grid. I mean, there's a variety of reasons that you might be a supporter instead of a participant, but um, we want everybody, we want everybody to be involved in this campaign. So next slide. Um, so I, I wanted to go through our, our three uh, primary objectives here, our campaign goals. So we want to motivate action and increase awareness of the value of investing in these high performance building envelope technologies for both new and existing commercial buildings. So you are able to participate in this campaign with new construction buildings and with retrofits. Um, and also that, that motivate action will be the participant side and that increase awareness is more, is more the supporter side. Um, we want to recognize leaders who are adopting and achieving high performance building envelope systems. And we wanna demonstrate and document energy and cost savings with integrated design, construction, commissioning, and maintenance from implementation of high performance building envelope systems. Next slide. So those were some pretty lofty goals. So how are we planning on achieving these goals? Um, well, the first thing we did was collect a wonderful technical advisory group who has given us feedback on everything from 
the font on our website being too small to the like nitty gritty details of the calculations in the calculator that Simon is going to walk you through later. So I do want to say a big thank you to our technical advisory group. Next slide. So once we got some helpers on board, we started to develop our, our online tool and, and make it publicly available on a website. I'm not going to go through the tool in detail here. Um, the point of this slide is just to show you that this, this is it. This is all the information that we need from you in order to analyze your building envelope. Um, we didn't want this to be a very intimidating interface, and we didn't want you to have to, um, to you know, track down 30 different people and building documents from 40 years ago to give us the information that we needed. Um, so we just need your building type, the climate that your building's in, some building geometry information. For retrofit, you will be comparing the existing building with the planned retrofit. And then for new construction, you'll be comparing um, the, the current design versus existing over existing code. Next slide. So once you enter all of your information in that calculator, um, you get taken to a results page, which I, which I did not replicate here. Um, if your building is, you know, if you've already put lots of high efficiency windows and great insulation and stuff in, and you're already have, you're already comfortable with the number um, that you get with the percent improvement in your building envelope performance and are already eligible for an award from DOE, great, pat yourself on the back, it's, it's time to send it to us. Um, but we anticipated that a lot of people would actually want to use this tool to make design decisions. And so if you're dissatisfied, um, great, your building's been saved. Uh, if you scroll to the bottom of our results page, which Simon will show you, um, the building characteristic with the most room for improvement has been identified. So let's say you're doing a retrofit and you're debating replacing, you know, old single pane windows with new great, you know, triple pane windows you can actually see the percent difference that that makes um, you know comparing different window retrofit options and you'll be routed directly to window resources so commercially available technologies case studies and um and just a myriad of additional resources depending on on what category um, has been has been selected next slide So once you've played with your um, with your calculations and you've made your final design decisions about your building um, and you've submitted to us, there are several recognition tiers that are available. So for an existing building envelope retrofit, um, you're eligible for recognition at either 30 or 50 percent improvement. Um, and again, that for retrofit, that's new improvement over your base building. And then next slide. For new construction, again, you're comparing your building as designed to code, and so these percentages are a little lower. So these recognition tiers are 20% um, improvement or 40% improvement over code. Next slide. And then we do have sort of open options for additional recognition. Um, so we are sort of anticipating that there are things that will come up in this campaign that we have not anticipated. And, um, and so we wanted to have these two categories available. So for role models, um, this is an additional tier of recognition that will be available to, to buildings that not only meet an existing tier, but also incorporate an additional advanced strategy or technology, um, somehow really go above and beyond and, and serve as role models within their industry. And then the other option here is an honorable mention. Um, which would be for buildings that don't actually manage to meet a campaign recognition tier, um, but still make a, a noteworthy impact on the campaign um, in one way or another. Um, those, those buildings may apply for an honorable mention. Um, one, one additional item about the buildings that may be submitted for recognition. Um, we know that building envelope work takes a long time. Building a new building or a building envelope retrofit takes a long time. So we don't anticipate that you would start designing a building now and have it completed by next summer in time for us to recognize you at an industry event. 
Um, so actually any buildings that have been completed since January of 2019 are eligible to participate. So that gives us the past 18 months and the next year um, for, for completed projects to submit and be recognized during the first year of this campaign. Next slide. So I've given you a lot of information. I'm just going to, to summarize it at a high level um, one more time before I hand it over to Simon. So we hope that um, everyone takes the opportunity at the end of this to go to our website and register with the campaign as either a participant or supporter. Um, again, that is, that is totally free to do. Um, and for the participants, what it allows us to do is know that when we launch in June, that you're ready for us to send you login information so that you can start um, entering your building data into that, into that online calculator. Um, you can use your website to determine that building performance um, and we'll provide you technical support along the way. The, the campaign email address is listed on the website. If you have questions about your data, um, all, all of that falls under the umbrella of technical support. Um, when you're content with your results, you send them to us for validation. We will review those results, request verification documentation um, to confirm what you've entered in the online tool. You'll provide that to us. We will say, great, we will confirm that you are, um, are eligible for the award that you have applied for. Um, you'll then be recognized by DOE. We'll list you on, the, you know, we'll add your gold star to your name on the website. Um, and then hopefully in person next summer, um, or next fall, we will present you an award at an as yet to be determined uh, industry event. And with that, I will hand it over to Simon. Yes, thank you, Haley, and thank you everyone else attending this uh, webinar today. Um, so um, why don't we uh, uh, move to the next slide? Uh, so, um, I'm going to talk about two th or focus on two things here. First is the um, how we evaluate the buildings and um, based on the you know the criterion and the criteria that uh, Haley presented. How do we evaluate the buildings and and um, and making sure that you you meet those or meet any of those? Um, so uh, we have a we started working on a building metric or building thermal performance metric um, a few years back and so it was very nice that this came in handy for us for this campaign um, so i'm, I'm going to just briefly talk about this metric so it's easier for you to understand what it represents um, and then i'm going to move over to the website and show you some of what um Haley already presented in, in, in more of that uh sort of show you how it it all works um so uh when we started working on this metric we we looked at okay what what are other industries doing um uh and just as an example here we have the car industry which is uh, when you are to you know try to evaluate different cars and their performance, um, you can fast forward here uh, with the slides one or two times. One more time, yeah. So they, there are all these variables in a car, right? Similar to a building, uh, a lot of variables, and the performance indicator here a lot of times could be the miles per gallon value, and it, it allows every buyer and users to to evaluate the performance of the car. Uh, or and also to compare the cars between each other um so it's a very well used and uh, appreciated metric for that industry so fast forward please and one more time one yeah you go that's good that's good okay so uh for buildings then what can we do i mean we have all these variables already uh we talk about our value um of you know the R value of the walls or the roof or foundation, and we talk about U factor for fenestration. Uh, there are thermal bridges that will impact the overall thermal performance and even the installation quality and all those kind of things. Air tightness is a big one. 
a building type and exposure and all that and it's thermostat set point setbacks all that is very very important um and and yeah so let's just just agree that there are a lot of variables right and the question is what indicators do we have for this um and do we have one that can we can utilize here and make use of in the campaign? So one more click, please. And maybe one more. So EUI, a lot of us are fam familiar with that. It's the energy usage intensity, but it's it, it it represents the everything. Everything that you see in the building is in the EUI. Um, one more click please the downside is that it's only applicable to existing buildings if we talk about the actual ui um and it's a one-way connection in a way that um it, it's a box you know we, we something comes out of it but we don't necessarily what's know what's inside the box so it's very hard to understand and uh, what is it that influences the ui um so in terms of looking at the building envelope performance the e using the eui is very difficult uh and if if not impossible and the thing with eui is that it's also very influenced by the building usage um yes move forward and then we have the predicted eui which is simulations and i can get one more click please sorry for all these animations um it could be complicated and it could be time consuming and you make assumptions a lot of assumptions on 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 things that you may not know it may be correct it may not be correct so so this is what we have right now in terms of uh, um metrics we can talk about ratings and rating systems but a lot of times these ratings are relative relative to a you know base case or some type of building and it doesn't really the EUI, it's good because it says that you know, this amount of energy per square footage, right, of conditioned floor area. Very easy to understand, uh, but then you may have some ratings that, you know, I have an eight on this, and it's great. Yeah, but you don't, but what does that eight represent or, and so forth? So, so for this campaign, nah, we wanted to see if we can do something better. And since, like I said, we were working on this other metric which seem to fit very well into what we're doing here. So another click. Yes, yes, yeah, I wanted to point that out too. Um, EUI is not equivalent to miles per gallon because a miles per gallon is, is set in a way that, that you have decided on a driving pattern, right? And then you you measure how much mile, you know, gallon of, uh, of gas is used to to um, put, put, to drive this distance or in driving whatever in whatever conditions. Um, but for the EUI, like I said, there's so much hidden and it's very um, influenced uh, by how you use the building. So you can't say that EUI is is the same as miles per gallon. And click. Okay equations right uh always equations well this is not really i'm not going to make this try this to make this really complicated but i can ask for one maybe one more click there you go um so if we are really going to try to simplify things uh we can talk about the energy usage um which is what the energy that the hvac system uses to condition the building and it's it's ba basically equal to the energy that if we talk about you see that little funny n eta it's just the efficiency factor so yeah so that whatever energy that is used by the by the the uh, conditioning system is on the left side then we can talk about the energy that's on the right side which is heat uh, flowing out of and into the building through the envelope it could be through the wall, the opaque wall, it could be solar radiation through the windows, it could be air leakage, all of that. And then you have the QN, which is all the internal load inside the building that obviously will have an impact on um, how much the HVAC system is running. And this QN is also 
very, very much affected by what what you do inside the building, what the usage is. Uh, now, we wanted to focus on what is highlighted in green here because we wanted to, to look at the envelope and validate the performance of the envelope. So we defined a metric that is, as we, if we look at this uh, second row here where it says this Q envelope is equal to the DEP, we call it that, the building envelope performance metric. And then we look at it over the uh, whole envelope area. Uh, so the BEP is defined by that. Can I have another click? So actually, the, if you look at it in unit wise, the BEP gets this has the same um, technical unit as EUI, though it's not over the condition floor area, it's over the envelope area. Uh, next click. Okay, yeah, so you better pay attention now because we're gonna have a test afterwards here uh, on this. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I, I debated to, to did not have this slide, but but I think that it, it will be okay uh, because I, I we just wanna show um, what loads uh, you see on the building. Uh, and uh, we talk, I talked about the solar, solar load. We have the late air leakage and then we have um, so sort of uh, regular heat transfers through uh, uh, thermal conductivity. Um, the thing that um, the insulation helps to reduce, um, and all that we we want it <coughs> we want it everything to be part of the BEP. So <coughs> excuse me, the BEP value really. Um, accounts for all these loads that we see even even negative loads so when you um if you think about the uh, night sky radiation uh, and so for those that are not familiar with that is that uh during the night time the uh, heat will radiate from the building if it's cold outside or to the sky so this is sort of a negative solar radiation without the sun um you can you can see imagine like you're sitting in front of a fireplace and you can feel that nice warm radiation heating up your skin um now during the night sort of the building is that fireplace to the rest of the environment if it's cold outside so all that is accounted for in the bp um next oh okay so yeah this is just a quick slide showing that you know we wanted to show what what the bp could look like uh Typical shoebox building, um, and sorry, this is all in all in. No, they're actually in both SI and inch pound. Um, and but we can move over to the next slide. Just showing what the BEP would look like if uh, if you're familiar with the climate zones here in the U.S. Uh, we have 1A down in Miami, Florida, and and 8A up in Alaska. So this is just how that, if you we use the very same building, this one has a lot of windows. Um, and uh, uh, we still, we see this pretty, pretty much the same. This is ex exactly the same building, <coughs> but just exposed in, in various climates over the US. It's just, when it's getting a bit, bit cold, you know, when it's getting colder from, from five climate five, zone so five, five and up, then, then it increases that BEP value. So you obviously want a, a lower BEP just for EUI, you want this BEP value to be pretty low. Mm. And so let's move up to next. Okay, so now I'm going to go visit the website. So hopefully we can do that. Um, and I think I'm going to be. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Our show my screen. Yeah, that works. Okay, is anyone does everyone see this? Uh, let's see, I can't see. Uh, Haley, can you please unmute yourself and tell me what if you see my screen? I see your your web browser that says that you're connected to GoToWebinar. Okay, then I'll move this one over here. Perfect. And now I can see it. Hopefully, you see this. Okay, so welcome to the campaign website. Um, and 
this will everyone will be able to access this when we're um um uh, when we live when in, when we're launching launching this uh now here <clears throat> you can find some basic information on how you enroll or what you do if you want to become participate uh, as a participant or a supporter and if you ask to be a participant then you will uh get some um, login information we, we, you will provide it with login information um, uh, from us so I'm going to access the campaign here and once I've logged in this is what this will look like so you will immediately be brought to a tool but the tool also has a lot of um, resources and other information here that you can access um, uh, up here, uh, there are uh, information. I hope you can see my my cursor. Uh, but there are information about partners, recognition, and organizers. So people, that, uh, companies, and and yeah, uh, people that uh, participate in this. How you access the campaign and technical assistance. Uh, and we also have resources here, which I and I will also talk about that here in a bit. So let's just get get on the tool that the tool is sort of built in into the uh, <clears throat> the browser. I'm going to move my camera so I don't have to. Yeah. Okay. So the tool is built in here. So that's what you see immediately when you when you access or log in. And I'm going to show you how it works. You you start with you 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 name in the building. And before I continue, I'm probably going to need to say that this is a work in progress. So uh, we're still doing things to this web, to this tool, um, and and adding features and so forth. So it's not fully ready. I would say that it's 90 to 95 percent ready, but there will be you know some small uh, tweaks here and there before the actual launch, and I'll, I'll inform you of those while we go. And one of them here is the, you name your building, whatever you want. And, and later you have your saved building so you can retrieve what, what, you, you, what you've been working on before up here. Um, so you name your building uh, and then you choose whether this is a new construction or a retrofit. As a default, it puts, go, goes to retrofit. <coughs> and this is very important because um, the tool will identify a base case for you, uh, which you compare to. So, 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 which is then very important for for uh, new construction and for retrofit. For if you have a retrofit product, you don't necessarily know what all the information that we ask for of the existing buildings. How would you know that um, how much thermal, you know, how much insulation you have in the walls, or if you haven't opened them up? Uh, so in that we need to help the users to 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 look up. Okay, when was this building built, and what was the present code at that time? <laughs> so uh, what will be here as a selection? Uh, you're going to tell us when the build the 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 building was constructed, um, and then you're going to say in which climate it is. Now here, one feature that is not here yet is you're going to have to tell us in which state it is. And then based on statistics, and this is just in our, in our effort to make this um, uh, the base case more realistic, is that we're going to look at what the code lo look like at that year in that state. So maybe there's a code delay of seven years, then that, that will be applied to when your building was con constructed. And then code-wise, your building was constructed in 83. Um, so that that's what will be here for now. It's you, you tell us what the climate zone is, and we need to know that. We also want to know what how exposed the, the climate is. Uh, I mean, the building is to to the exterior climate, and that mainly has to do with wind loads and so forth for us to be able to calculate the the air leakage. Now we want to ask. We ask you to tell us what the building look like. And we use these DUE um, uh, prototype buildings here. Um, 
if you find if you don't find a building that you think fits <coughs> we will work with you but hopefully um you can find something that is similar here uh in, in the list of buildings that we have available uh the thing is that you can still change your it defaults to the uh prototype building um uh, uh, characteristics but you can change that to whatever building height you want or condition floor area or anything that you want to change here it's really just looking at the shape of the building and you tell us the 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 exact dimensions uh then we move down here and you will have uh, uh two the left side and the right side here and the left side is your existing building and as i said before that will be occupied these values will be occupied based on on what when the building was built and where it was where it was built so where it's located based on the code that was present at that time um so uh this this is what now comes up for this building i'm just going to scroll up i think i uh, yeah i chose the medium office building and this is what the r value looks like um you can if you rather do uh, uh si units which i think most of you won't uh don't uh, you could toggle that here up here but it's here as a default it's in feet in spam okay so we'll go back here now so so this is what the the computer the tool tells me about the existing buildings and you may disagree with these values and then you are able to change that so you can actually click on <coughs> uh, underneath the r value and you will be brought to and sorry this looks a little bit funny this is one of the things that we need to change um but the thing is now that you this is the default materials that is given for this um a uh, building uh, for this for the wall wall but you may uh, think different so you may say you know no i need another material here or maybe i need two materials and then you the, the you will tell how, how thick the the thickness of these materials and in which order and so forth and then the the this tool here will calculate the r value for you so uh let's just assume that no i don't have any you know i okay yeah yeah, I have very little insulation. Maybe I don't have any insulation. Let's just do zero. And it will call, calculate your R value for you, uh, which is very convenient. Then you can do the same thing on your planned retrofit, saying, okay, yeah, I'm going to add this exterior insulation. Uh, and, and, and you can add those material here, um, saying, okay, I'm going to, you know, I have some EPS or some XPS or whatever and tell us the, the thickness of that. And I'm not displaying it in the order that is likely now, right now, but but maybe this is just, just an example showing how it will work and it will display your R value. Okay, so now we see here that there's a big difference between your existing uh, building and your new building. Uh, maybe we don't planning on doing anything for the roof uh or maybe we want to change some membrane oh, we've been thinking of doing cool roof so yeah let's do that uh windows no nah, we're gonna wait with that and see uh we're not planning on replacing those okay so then then the tool is going to ask have you performed a building envelope commissioning or conducted a blower door test um so and so here as you can imagine then we want to know about the air tightness of the building um and air tightness can have a huge impact on uh the actual uh energy demand so uh we if you say no here we can still say okay have you done anything to try to improve it if yes then a 10 percent improvement of the air tightness is assumed uh we're not going to allow you to get more because it's like i said it can have a huge impact now if you say yes here then you can change these values and say okay i know what my air type is now now and i i know where i'm getting uh, or where i want to be and then yeah minus one is hard uh let's do that and so just some small changes so we move further we, we zoom down here with all the inputs uh, this one is optional 
you don't have to do it, but it's there. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you why it's here, because if you wanna sort of adjust the, the, the set point temperatures or your setback temperature, here's where you can do it. You can also adjust some of the lighting load, load from appliances and how many people is average on average working inside the building or is present inside the building. Now, hang on, I, I did say that th these internal loads did not have an impact on uh, the BP, and that is correct. However, uh, we also present an estimated EUI here, and so we need this information uh, if you want to look at that number. Again, it's, a, it's an estimate, and if there's so many things that impacts the EUI, so uh, just see it as a sort of a guesstimate of, of, and maybe see how it varies uh, from your uh, you know, base case to where you're going and so forth. Um, but the set points, uh, as probably all of you know, it has a huge impact and that will be reflected both on the BEP and the EUI. So it's important to put these uh, accurate numbers here. Um, by default, if you don't do anything here, it's just going to read the values that uh, is used as a default for these DOE prototype buildings. So if you don't touch it, it's you, the, the, these will have an impact, but you won't see it. Okay, then I need to uh, review and acknowledge that I'm willing to share this information. And, and once I've done that, I can click on check results. So let's do that. Um, since this is a real-time um, calculation tool, it's it's calculate and calculating right now, um, and it typically it goes faster than this. Uh, it could be that I have a the, um, uh, not too good internet right now, um, so let's just hope that it proceeds here. Um, typically, this takes a few seconds, and then this table will tell you. Uh, what values, uh, uh, where you're at on this BEP value that we talked about, and uh, from the base case and where you're going. Um, I'm going to try to see if something may have went went wrong here. Um, see if I can quickly go back and, and do this again. Uh, uh, okay, okay, let's do this again. So let's hope it works this time. Um, it seems to get stuck here. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry for that. Uh, the, the, the thing is, what you will see here is that uh, uh, the BEP value will show, like I said, uh, this will indicate how far you've, you've come to get here. Um, we also have one version available on another side, so I'm just going to quickly go see if I can use that just to show you where this version here that we've been looking at has a little bit more features and and it's been been updated in many ways but i'm going to go back to another site where we keep another an older version so just bear with me quickly and i'm going to because there are a few things that I, that we would like to show you um so it would be unfortunate unfortunately if, if we can't access that uh, quickly quickly here yep okay just give me a second and I will quickly make those changes that we talked about. Um, medium office. And I'm going to, I think, I believe I've zoomed in on the other side to, oh, it's okay. Okay. And here we had 24 something and we did change the R value, uh, the, the air type is a little bit. Okay. So let's uh, acknowledge again and check the result. Um, and down here underneath this chart, uh, there is a breakdown. And see here, here comes the BEP value. Um, I'm, I'm not, unfortunately, so this, this side here, the, the one we're viewing right now, all the numbers are not correct. And so this is our work in progress. Uh, I didn't, we didn't expect that to have this issue here now, now when we wanted to show the tool. But so please don't focus on the numbers itself. Uh, it, it will, if we go back to this one, you see that we have an estimated EUI value here. 
on both sides. And those are different now where compared to this older version, the UI is not here. But let's go back down here and, and, and view things. So, so this one is calculating and, and it's before it, it's still doing that, even though we can see the values. And the reason for that is because it's uh, doing a, a energy performance breakdown. Um, so here, one by one, it's looking at four different categories that Haley mentioned. She talked about the four, wall, the window, and the roof, and the air tightness. And it's evaluating what, which of these, where is the, where is the weak link? Where do you need to focus? Um, and again, don't focus on the numbers because I'm not, I don't, for this side, I don't trust the numbers uh, here that is generated, but look at the concept. The concept is that it has identified the windows as being where you should target your efforts. And I, we talked about before, in order to, to meet the criterion. Maybe you've already met the criterion, uh, but maybe you haven't. And then that this, this will tell you how to get there or sort of what should I really focus on. So in, in, in reality, I think that this, for the air tightness, that this uh, curve would really drop here and also cross it. And maybe the roof would do it and even the wall uh, like I said, it has to do with this being an, an old version here where all the calculations were not running as it should. Uh, but the, the, the thing is here that you now see the window performance here as being the one that you should attack and focus on. So then if you will get a description here of, okay, this is what I need to focus on, uh, some information here. And you can access these window resources that we have put together. Uh, where you can get information on what can what can I do then? You know, do I need to replace the window, or there's some films that I can use, or um, what 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 options are there? Are there attachments? Anything? Then, <coughs> excuse me. Then this information will be available to you here, and we also provide some case studies of you know when they successfully have done things to windows and and what, what they gain and what they saw out of doing that, and additional resources available. So all this will uh, exist. And now you're actually being brought to the site where we keep the resources. So you can access the resources from <coughs> up here. And just for the sake of it, I'm just going to go back to see if this is responding to me now, the other. Yeah, yeah. So all the all the resources are available here. So if you want to change, and yeah, well, I mean, I'm I'm I propose to do something with my wall, but I don't know yet. You know, I don't, I'm not sure what to do. Then, uh, or you know, I'm undecided. Then maybe I find some information here that will uh, uh, that I can make make use of that can be beneficial for the for your project. So. There are a lot of resources here that are available. So when you're at the result page, you're just being linked specifically to what <coughs> the tool identifies as, as tar or targets you should target to improve the BEP value. Uh, I realize that we're running short on time. So I, I think I'm not gonna talk more about this tool. Um, and uh, I, think, I think that's it. Haley, do you, want, do you wish to add anything? Uh, no, I think I think you covered it. I've seen some questions coming in and some people voting on them, but I would remind you guys if you have any questions about anything Simon or I have said, go ahead and enter your questions in Slido. Um, but yeah, if not, I think we can go back to the slide deck. Great. Um, so yeah, if you will navigate back over to Slido, we are just going to run uh, two more polls quickly here, um, and then we'll get to your questions shortly. So after you've attended this webinar, would you consider joining the Building Envelope campaign? Um, yes, you think you will consider joining as a participant, yes, as a supporter, Probably, but you need additional information and then not at this time, which hopefully none of you say not at this time, but we understand.
And I am seeing a number of people saying that they would need additional information. And so if we can provide any of that information to you during our Q&A session in the last couple of minutes that we have here, um, I hope you enter those questions so that we can give you that information that you need. Okay, looks like these numbers are holding steady with about half of you responding to the poll. Give it another second and then we can flip over to our last poll. Okay, and then if you indicated uh, that you would be joining the Building Envelope campaign as a participant in the last poll, um, how many square feet of space would you anticipate registering? Um, and this is just so we know, you know, whether we're kind of getting to, to individual building owner managers that have a particular project in mind or whether, you know, you guys manage portfolios that you think this would be useful for. We're just trying, trying to get a sense of, of where our reach is going. Okay, and that's probably close to everyone who said yes in the last poll. I didn't get the exact number. So we'll give that another second and then we'll close out this poll as well. Okay, and then I did want to jump back over to our slide deck for just one second before we, yeah, before we went into the questions. Oh, I think I had one slide in here uh, just as a plug for the Better Building Summit, which is our launch event. Yes, perfect. Um, so we are running um, an extended version of this, an hour and a half long workshop um, on the formal envelope campaign launch at the Better Building Summit. Uh, this is Wednesday morning, June 10th from 11 a.m. to 1230. Um, you'll hear from Simon and myself again, as well as um, an early participant that is already using the tool with some of her um, some of her buildings, and she's she's going to walk you through um, kind of her experience using it and use um, a real building example as opposed to one that uh, that Simon is is making up a little bit on the fly. Um, there is a link to register at the summit on our website, which again is just ec.ornl.com, um, and then it's the banner at the top there is an option for you to, um, to register for the summit. And it is free, just an hour and a half long workshop. It'll be a bigger, better version of this. Um, and again, our, our website is ec.ornl.gov. So with that, we can jump over to your questions. I see a couple more have come in. Um, and so we'll start with the ones that have the highest votes. Simon, I don't know if you have this page pulled up if you want me to moderate a bit. Um, will this presentation be mailed to everyone? Um, yes, this has been recorded and will be, it will at the very least be posted on the um, Better Building site. I imagine you will get a follow-up email that tells you where that is posted. Um, Nina, if you want to chime in on that, but yes, you will definitely get, get a response to this. Um, this is definitely a Simon question. Is there a reason you did not use the thermal energy demand intensity to understand the building envelope performance impact? Um, yeah, so I might be mistaken here. I'm trying to refresh my memory of all the, the metrics that we looked at. Uh, but as far as I remember, this is a Canadian metric where it was developed in Canada and uh, it includes only heating and not cooling. Uh, but again, I, I can be wrong here, uh, but I can assure you that we have looked at all the or the variables, or I mean the metrics out there. Um, yeah, Simon, this is Mohammed. Just to add that, yeah, we did review it, and uh, this this metrics basically mostly focused on residential and uh, the high-rise residential buildings, while our campaign is focused on commercial buildings. Thank you, Mohammed. 
Okay, um, perfect. Is thermal bridging considered in this analysis? Uh, um, right now, it is not, no. Uh, we have debated how we could possibly implement that into, uh, and it's it, it wouldn't be a huge effort, but like we said, the tool is not ready yet. So what you, we've been looking at today is not the tool that will be launched on June 10th. So we, we, we're still considering it and we'll evaluate the options. Thank you. Are local building codes built into your program and calculator? No, we don't have that uh, precision or um, that information available in terms of statistics. We do have it on the state level, uh, but the tool will tell you. So if you know what, uh, what, what, what code was used as a specific year, you will be able to adjust that accordingly and you can all you can also go back into the tool and change those R values and and so forth because that's really what the code reads um yeah but now on state level because of available statistics okay um it looks like we got a response to our previous question about thermal bridging which says for thermal bridging you could use the betb guide um, bc hydro so yes. I assume that we will look into yep. that. Yep, okay. Um, will the campaign cover thermal performance of atrium building envelopes? So we have a few of those in the DOE uh, prototype buildings and uh, we are handling that already. Um, and when you define your roof uh, construction, uh, then there are, it should be ways to to for you to choose that kind of construction yeah but not sorry simon but we are not including the atrium buildings yeah right okay um there's a request for some confirmation of how the output is calibrated for reasonable accuracy and i think we actually deleted the calibration slide to try to keep this shorter today um but simon go ahead Oh, uh, well, I mean, we've done tons of calibration with uh, and validation against uh, mainly against NED Plus, but also with uh, other uh, energy performance assessment tools. So we can be sure to add that calibration slide back in for our uh, for our launch event. Thank you. Um, and then it said per the above, for example, against a whole building energy model, et cetera. So I think Simon just answered that question. Um, is there a credit associated to attending this presentation? Um, unfortunately, not that I'm aware of. Um, we didn't write up learning objectives or anything. Um, there's a comment here that says, it seems like the question about building envelope commissioning, or um, I think that means blower door testing, should be separate questions. So we can think about breaking breaking those out if we do you have want to make any other comments about that simon i, I know it's three o'clock but we've almost gone through them all no, so. it's, it's wor worth this uh, revisiting uh, so we really okay. the, the, the 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 really the thing with this tool is that we wanted to make it user friendly but still uh, as accurate as possible but, i mean we could ask hundreds of questions and make sure that you know this really well predict the energy performance but we had to find a good balance uh, and we were debating on maybe using the the why we asked about the the building envelope commissioning was mainly because we wanted to maybe give you some credit towards the uh installation quality um which then you know um we, we all know that has a huge impact uh but we have not yet sort of decided how to to if we're going to account for that and that sort of comes back to the the thermal bridging and, and all that, the, the discussion as well. But thank you for the input. We will consider it. Okay, I'm not sure we're gonna have time to get to all of these questions, but there is the next one is really important and I wanna be sure that I, that I cover it. Um, it says, as a commissioning service provider and not having a building in line to be a participant, what is expected from supporters? Um, and honestly, all that's expected from supporters is to help get the word out about the campaign. Um, tell people about it, recommend it if you think you see a place in the industry that you think it would be useful. 
Um, if you sign up as a supporter, we will share marketing materials with you so that it's not a big lift on you. You just forward information that we've already sent you. Um, and then we're happy to, if, you know, if you want us to host a webinar for you, if you have a lunch and learn series and want somebody to talk in, um, you know, talk around the campaign, we're happy to do to do all of that. So yeah, so supporters so are really just helping us get get the word out about the campaign. Um, I think we do probably have to wrap it. Um, unfortunately, without getting to these last two questions. Um, but again, the uh, thank you. The campaign formally launches June 10th. Our website is ec.ornl.gov. Um, here are Simon and my email addresses. And um, this is also the campaign email address, um, which uh, I have another person who checks um, additionally if I'm out of the office or anything to make sure nothing important gets missed. Um, so feel free to reach out if you think of any additional questions. Um, and thank you for attending and hope, hope to see you all on our participant and supporter request list soon. Thank you all.